and welcome to Renewal Church Online. My name is Christian. And my name is Daniel. Mm -hmm. If you're joining us for the first time online, please feel free and please feel at home. Mm -hmm. And please remember to subscribe so that you get all the notifications uh, that our church puts up. Every time we upload a video, you get to get it. And click that notification bell as well so that you stay uh, in touch with Renewal Church. Yes. So today we have a bit of a different service. We had our worship experience last night. Oh. And we had an amazing time. Yes. So this is it. But just before we get into it, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can worship you, that we can praise you physically and even online. And mm. I pray that, Lord Jesus, you just bless every person mm. who's here joining us today. May you bless them. Mm. May they experience you through this service. In yes. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the beginning, God created everything. He created because he cared. He cared enough to create you in his own image. Likeness of God living on earth, he created you for communion. Like a father longing for his child, he is not some distant God you cannot approach. He is here. He is right here in this room, in your heart. He is near, nearer than breath, heartbeat, nearer than you are to you. Closer than second chance or next opportunity. Closer than tonight or yesterday. He is real. More real than touch, than see, hear, smell, or taste. More real than reality. He is our reality. More real than joy, pain, sorrow, or the love of being in love. He is present. Like space, wind, time, silence, night. He is waiting. Like creation, like words on the tip of tongue, he, like songs that have yet to be sung. He is beauty in oranges, blues, every hue, every shade, sunset and sunrise. Whisper his name. He teaches to create through what he made. Every brush stroke, every line, every melody, every rhyme, every flower, every bird cry, Yeshua. So the question then remains, do you have faith to let the creator help you create? He is holy, cannot be touched, explained. Like sweet seconds of prayer, like grandmother on knees, wood flare, wood floor bare. He is old hymns, the extending of limbs, stretched across trees, stripes to heal disease. He is son, distinctly three, distinctly one, the only one, the only wise, the only resurrector of lives. He is king, and no earthly throne can house him. No amount of elegant words can espouse him. He is moment and voice, power of choice, in word and deed, in fruit and seed, nailed hands, nailed feet, innocent booths that bleed. He is believed, he is all, he is call and purpose, everything we can sacrifice, he is worth it and more, much more. Our good deeds are mere pennies, we'll never even the score. He is behold, he is wow, he is who, what, when, why and how. He is the one who does it all. He is the one whom we come to see. He is souls cry and sinners plea. He is the epitome the, that no one can light a candle to or come within a million foot full of. He is above. He is the Father's love. Maker of ways of earth and wind. Ancient of days. Has no fear. Have no fear. Have no fear. Our God is here. is here. Amen. All right, here you go.
musicians when they hear break it down it's like but you guys are like Sita, you don't fear anything you don't fear the break it down okay and that's you guys get the point you guys have learned from this song so well there's just something about not fearing okay when when a lioness is with its cabs the cabs are just jumping around in in fact the the, the craziest most dangerous place can be the safest place when they're with their mother and that's the same with us when we realize that God is with us we dance like crazy because we don't fear anything because we know that the most high is watching over us he's taking care of us so very practically I want us to just have five seconds of dancing like you know that God is with you okay are you guys with me uh, Chris are you with me <laughs> we just want to celebrate the Lord in this place with our dance with our singing Say, Nemo go
really is Jehovah in our lives. He's Jehovah Shabbat. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's Jehovah Nisi. He's God about everything in our lives. So let's sing together. Jehovah, 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 yeah, yeah.
so we just have a couple of announcements for you. Um, if you know or you don't know, we have moved out of Elishama. Yes. So this coming Sunday, the 6th of March, please join us at Hillcrest Prep School. Don't go to the high school, the prep school, and you'll find us there. Yes. Mm. Uh, we're so grateful for God's faithfulness yep. at Elishama Greens Garden. <laughs> and just a great reminder that we do have uh, youth meetings that happen every other Friday. And this is for ages between 12 to 19. So if you have young people uh, in your space, please feel free to contact uh, through this email right here and we'll be able to get you in touch with our youth program. And it's just a great way for the young people to get to uh, interact with each other, interact with the Word of God, worship together, go camping, play games, and just enjoy this time and this age group that they're in. So youth every other Friday. Guys, take your seats, make yourself at home. If you're absolutely exhausted, have a sleep. Don't worry, that's fine. You won't be judged. Um, if you have a Bible with you, I'd love you to turn to Matthew chapter 7, which is one of the kind of biographies of Jesus. If you don't, don't worry. I will read it out. We as a church have been on this sermon series through the Sermon on the Mount, and it's been this incredible kind of journey through Jesus' manifesto for living. And in chapter 7, verse 7, he comes to this really kind of famous passage around instruction, and he offers this to the people. Verse 7 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds and to him who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you if his son asks for bread will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, now to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask him. So in everything, do to others as you'd have them do to you, for this sums up the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Lord God, this is your word. This is your word in and out of season to us. And we pray we be transformed by you, by the power of your spirit working in us. In your mighty name. Amen. Guys, um, this passage above everything, and it's about a lot of things, but above everything, it's about asking. And it's about asking. And I've got to be honest, I come from a culture where asking for things is really awkward. I, so I come from England, and you don't ask for things. It's just really... Uh, awkward and I, I don't like asking for things I quite like to be self-contained I like to have things organized and I wonder how many of us our response to how are you is I'm fine regardless like my world is falling apart I just had a car crash on the way here like I haven't eaten in seven days and my hair is a nightmare <laughs> but I'm fine I don't know how many of you are like that if that's you I don't like asking for things from those around me. And if I'm really honest, I don't like asking for things from my Heavenly Father sometimes. I sometimes find that my prayer life avoids questions of asking. I wonder if, like me perhaps, we've over-spiritualized uh, the act of prayer to be like, Lord, would you please protect me today as I go shopping in the supermarket? Or it's beautiful and nothing bad ever happens or whatever. And that's not to trivialize this or to say that Nairobi's always safe. We know that. But this is to say, I don't think that's the prayer of someone who's on their knees. I don't think that's the prayer of someone crying out, God, would you break in? I'll say things like, Lord, would you, I need your help with these things. But if I'm honest, they're not things I'm consciously seeking God to move on or needing his uh, presence to appear. I guess as I've reflected on this passage, and actually I was challenged on this as we were worshipping earlier, as we thought about kind of what God was just being uh, inspiring and envisioning people with, is what's, where's the ask? The God who seems to invite me to ask, to seek and to knock, what is my outrageous, what is my out audacious ask of him? What is that I need God to move for this to happen? Ask of him. Or am I satisfied with the tame and the manageable and the ask that I can do on my own to make sure I'm not disappointed by God? 
I was once in a, a church conference, and I'd invited some people along, and they were really skeptical about church. They were really skeptical about the whole Jesus thing. And I'd basically dragged them along to this thing, said, don't worry, it'll be amazing. I'm sure they'll serve great food. You should definitely come along. And they came along, and um, the whole reservation around church being, do you know what, I just think you guys are a bit weird. I think it's a good job they don't come here, because we are definitely weird. But they kind of came along like, I think you guys are a bit weird. You do wacky things. I'm not sure I want to be a part of this. Uh, so anyway, they come along, and uh, they're just the band worshipping. And then this woman, and we knew her in our church as Mad Liz. That was just the affectionate term that we gave to her. And uh, she kind of, I, I can see her edging towards the stage. And I'm going, oh, my gosh, what's she going to do? This weird woman in our church. I almost felt like, do you know if I just go rugby tackle her now, nothing weird would happen. <laughs> and she kind of climbs up onto the stage. And she's one of those people, you know, who just wears outrageous clothes. And it's not an honoring to God. It's just to look weird and stand out. But it's just, she kind of climbs onto the stage. And she runs. And she runs. She moves the worship leader out of the way. And she runs past him. She, like, sends Chiquaza flying or whatever. She runs here. And then she turns to come back. And as she runs back across the stage, she does a huge cartwheel across the stage. <laughs> and honestly, I'm stood there, kind of looking at my friends, going, yeah, we're, we're not weird. <laughs> this is definitely normal. I'm like, oh, my goodness, I'm trying my best. Lord Jesus, I'm trying my best to bring these people. But you might, why are you, why are you doing this? The service continues, the worship continues. At the end of the worship, this old lady crawls up onto stage pretty much she gets up she's tears in her eyes she's weeping she says uh, many of you don't know me but i'm dying of cancer i can't get to church very often um so i haven't been in church in a long time so i'm dying of cancer and as we stood there worshiping i said god i'm struggling to know that you're real if you're real will you send a lady up onto the stage to do a cartwheel I felt a little bit judged, if I'm honest. <laughs> this woman's weeping. Through her audacious ask, she finds that Jesus is real. That Jesus moves, that Jesus cares. And I wonder, where are the areas of my life where I'm in desperate need of God to show up and break into a situation, otherwise it just won't happen? Or am I happy to have kind of just tame needs and tame wants that actually I can probably do in and of myself? that it'd be nice if God showed up for, but actually it doesn't really matter. What does asking when we don't know what that looks like mean? Well, firstly, you know, this is about community. This is an act in the community. This text is about prayer, but it's also about how we relate to one another. The sense in the text is that we have become the kind of community where giving and receiving and asking and joyfully loving one another is a way of life. Jesus presumes, he says, though we are evil, we are a people who give good gifts. We don't give stones, we give bread. We give, give snake, we give fish. And I wonder, is that true of us as a community? Where do we stand in the gap for God's provision for those who are asking? There might be people next to you who are desperately asking God for stuff, but you have it within your remit to be that in this community. We've made it publicly shameful to ask of things. Yet tonight you might be sat in church next to someone who desperately needs a job and you might have one to give. We could look at God as the, the posture of a God who, who wants us to ask because he wants to give us his best. I don't know about you, I sometimes feel like I, I come to God and he's frustrated or he's bugged by my asking. You know, I was recently at a dinner and uh, we'd been waiting for a while to get our food and eventually I kind of caught the waiter's eye and he came over and he went, yes. I said, Could, can I ask for some food? Uh, can I order some food? And he said, I suppose so. <laughs> it doesn't give you much confidence about the food, does it? And I asked, I said, um, I'd love a steak. I'd love a, a medium rare steak. And he just went, steak, medium. And then turned to my friend. And my friend said, I love a steak as well. Can I have a steak medium well? And he went, another steak, medium. 
And my friend went, actually, I'd like mine medium well. And he looked at him with a look of contempt that said, not only is your steak going to be medium, but I'm going to spit on it as well. <laughs> He turned and walked away, and I said, oh, actually, there's just one more thing. And he said, what, what, what is it now? What do you want? And I said, oh, do you mind if I order a drink? He's like, oh, my. I don't know if you've been there. <laughs> I don't know if you feel like that. Do you know what? Sometimes I go to God, and I feel like he's really busy and important. And although I know instinctively I'm meant to ask for this stuff, I'm worried I'm going to be bugging him. And God says, no, Come. And ask. Because God is the God who, who, who sent his son to die for the big and for the small. The things that are enormous, the, but the things that are close to our heart. The bread or the fish that we need for the moment. He doesn't discount them. Earlier in the sermon, in the Lord's Prayer, we, we see there's a sense of the big. Your kingdom come. Your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. But also the small. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us what we need for this moment. This is a father who says, come and treat me as a father. And not as a bureaucrat or a dictator. Don't worry about if you're bothering me. Let me be the judge of that. This is not a prayer for the superstars. It's the prayer for where we are. I love this prayer because it doesn't excuse me from praying for the big and the important but it recognizes the kind of child's heart before the father to say, I need you. I need you because I'm concerned about my mom. I'm concerned about my, my children. I'm concerned about my work, making rent, putting food on the table, or whatever. It's the prayer for those who are heroes and the prayer for those of us who struggle to get dressed in the morning and everyone in between. But as we kind of just wrap up, I want to call out the elephant in the room on this passage. What about when we deal with the silence, when we have asked, when we've had the courage and the bravery to ask, but we deal with the silence that comes with that? I wonder how many of you sat there tonight going, God, I asked. I definitely asked. And I've been asking for years. Lord, I've prayed. I've prayed a lot about this and nothing happens. Lord, I'm desperate for this. Do you not care? We could spend years discussing unanswered prayer. But what is it about where we bring ourselves to the one who creates the universe and trust that he knows what's going on and offer ourselves to him again? I wonder if these are just some of my reflections on unanswered prayer. Firstly this, prayer is not primarily about results, but about relationship. That we are called to turn to, to God um, regardless of, of whether we get the job or not. Regardless of, of whether we end up doing the thing we want. Because he wants relationship for us. Secondly this, there's a profound mystery to God. Something we can't always articulate and we don't understand. But there's a mystery to God and uh, there's a beauty in that, but also a tension in that that we feel. Thirdly is this, just because God doesn't answer doesn't mean he doesn't care. Or we shouldn't persevere with him. Just because God doesn't answer the way we think he should, it doesn't mean he doesn't care. John Wimber, who founded Vineyard back in the 70s in the U.S., said this, in the old days we used to pray for no one. And no one got healed. And now we pray for everyone. And some of them get healed. There's something about going to God with our request. And he might not grant all of them. But if we never go to him with requests, he won't grant any of them. We remember that God's heart is good. And we're not always aware of what that means. But I'm so thankful to the, to the prayers that God has said no to. I feel, can I just have an embarrassing moment? We're not filming this, are we? Okay, Christian, if you put this online, your contract is over. <laughs> when, I was, um, when I was younger, I um, fell in love with this girl, who's not my wife, who's also not here. But I fell in love with this girl, <laughs> and I wrote her the most passionate Valentine's card ever. It was beautiful, it was poetic, it just poured my heart out. 
And we were seven, so it's pretty serious stuff. <laughs> and I can't believe you're not taking this seriously, guys. Come on. <laughs> and I just offered my life out to her and kind of just, I just offered this to her uh, and said, would you be my Valentine? And she said, no, you look like a frog. <laughs> and I said, girls can be so harsh. <laughs> and do you know, at the time I was broken. I was, I was weeping. I remember going home and going, oh, Mom, this girl, she doesn't love me. Mom was like, you know about girls? You're seven. <laughs> Do you know, I, I moved away from that area. I didn't see it for a long time. And about 15 years later, we were at a, a party. And I saw her at this party. And I had a really human moment where I went, thank you, Lord, for not answering my prayer. <laughs> she does not like like she used to do. <laughs> And she, I talked to her, and she was horrible. I was like, oh, my goodness. My life with you would have been terrible. God, thank you for not answering my prayers. Of course, it's not the most serious example. But there are times I'm so glad when God didn't answer my prayers. When God has chosen his infinite wisdom to put up with my pain in the moment, that he might give me life going forwards. Do you know, God delights sometimes or enjoys the way that we wrestle through things in prayer. I don't think this is about huge life or death things necessarily, but perhaps there are some things where the journey holds as much for us as an instant answer would. Where we're praying, God, I want you to do this now, and he chooses in his love not to because he cares about what is going on in us and through us and the formation that is happening, that uh, uh, giving over of something straight away would not do to us. God desires our best utterly. And I guess finally this, silence is not a reflection of distance or care or that God has forgotten or is not on the way. Some of the wisest thinkers in the church have cautiously concluded that as God's kingdom comes, it isn't God's will to bring it all at once. Because we couldn't bear it if he did. God is working like an artist with difficult material. And prayer is the way that some of that material cooperates with the artist instead of resisting him. How that is so, we don't fully understand until we see God face to face. But this is one of the most basic Christian insights. We're going to continue uh, worshipping together. But I'd love it if you just stand with me. Because um, this prayer was about a community. And we recognize that not only does God stand alongside us in our terms of hurt and pain and silence and a need for answer, but our community does as well. And I'd love us to do this today, that we as a community would stand alongside. We would pray for those and gather around those who are struggling with God's silence. Chikwaza, do you want to come up and join us? We're just gonna, I'm just going to lead just for a few minutes. We're just going to pray for one another. I'd love us to pray for these two things. One is for those who are experiencing the silence of God. For like, where are you on this? I've been praying for this. And we as a community, we're just going to pray with you and alongside you. And secondly, I just felt this as we were worshipping earlier. I feel like there are, there are some of you that you have the audacious ask. That you've got this audacious dream that is God's dream that he's given you. But your dreams have been looked down on. You've been told that those are not proper Christian things. Told that you're bad. But God loves you. That's what I felt God wanted to say tonight. For those with audacious dreams, with an audacious ask of God. So guys, I want us to start just by praying for those who are experiencing the silence. If you're going, God, where are you on this? Where are you on this thing? Where are you with this with this person who's sick? This in my schooling or this in my job? This is my family. Where are you on this? If, if that's you, we're not going to ask you to do anything crazy. We're not looking for cartwheels. But what we are looking, I guess, uh, guys, if, if like me, you just want to receive from God, just maybe put your hands out in front of you as a sign saying, God, I want to hear from you. I'm feeling the silence. I'm experiencing the silence. There's a deep 
It feels like a deep disconnect. Lord, would you come? And guys, as those people have their hands out, if you're around them, can you just extend a hand to them, please? Just begin praying for them. If you're just part of our, our church or our congregation, just guys, just go and pray with some of these people. If you love Jesus and you have a pulse, that qualifies you to pray for people. It's not that we don't take it seriously. We just know a lot of people need prayer. So guys, let's be looking around. Let's gather around those people who need who need prayer. And let's pray into the silence that they might know this community loves them, that it cares for them, it wants to walk with them. And Jesus does too. Yeah. 
you lift him up right now? Why don't you lift it up? I shout a praise. Why don't you let it out and worship him? Worship him.
Heavenly Father, thank you so much for just blessing us and gracing us with your presence uh, this evening. We're so grateful, Lord Jesus, for creativity. We thank you for the God that you are. We thank you, just, just hearing the spoken word from stone, that you, you created us in your image. And we pray that, Heavenly Father, you can help us to be a reflection of that in every space that we find ourselves in, oh God. I pray that, Lord, you fill our cups with courage, with strength, with grace, with mercy and love, that, Lord, we can be your hands and your feet in our city, in our families, and, Lord, in the world. So we thank you, Heavenly Father. May you be glorified and exalted. We thank you that your promises are true. They never change. And we thank you that you give these promises to us so freely. We love you. We honor you. I pray that you be with each and every person who showed up today. I pray that, Lord, our lives will not be the same. May we be transformed and changed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service today. We hope you enjoyed the worship and everything that this service had. See you next time. And if you plan to come physically, find us at Hillcrest, not Elishama Greens Garden. We're going to Hillcrest. So let's go to Hillcrest. Bye.